Hi, beautiful cells. How are you doing? This is Shree Manju. It's a lovely day here in Ireland, 17 degrees. It's great. Everyone is smiling. Of course, with the sun out, we do smile. And um, yeah, if you are uh, from a sunny place, you don't get what we mean. But yeah, we see a lot of gray clouds and when the blue sky is there, it just excites everyone. As we get excited, I also want to tap on that uh, part of uh, how to release the anxiety in us. I was, um, I personally, I have gone through many anxiety moments. It's something that we all do, no matter how many times you say like, I need to meditate, I need to breathe, I'll be calm, but sometimes you just need more tools. So I said like, uh, I'll sit down and see how many I'll get in and how many I have used myself that can benefit with you guys. So here I'm going to share all the 15 of them that I figured out, there are 15 of them, I wrote it down uh, with you all and see which one you relate to, what you can learn from something new or you can share something that I haven't covered here and something worked for you because sharing is caring. I love that Barney quote. And yeah, so to begin with, uh, when you feel anxious, what I generally notice is uh, your head is spinning or your heart is palpating or tightness in your tummy or your body just closes up like into that womb shape, like the fetus shape. Uh, as you get curled up, like, you know, you might be sleeping tight, you might be grinding your teeth. So these are your anxious moments you bring on. Your body is telling you the physical signs as well and... Um, you, you, we generally get into that cocoon shape just to feel that comfort that we are holding ourselves in a safe place uh, and uh, nurturing ourselves even without knowing it. Like, you know, psychologically, I think that is the tendency we do. And uh, we look for the comfort. So the comfort for me, if we look outside, it is very hard to find. But here we can always start a journey with ourselves a comfort within ourselves, you know, making a connection within your own inner guide. And uh, the first thing I would do is when I feel I'm having a moment, sometimes I can't define what is this triggering. Sometimes I can say, ah, this is uh, something is coming up. Like, you know, like last weekend I was uh, holding a place in uh, RDS Mind, Body, Soul event. I was quite anxious and I was going through that. Like, you know, it's my first time holding a stall. I don't know what to expect. I don't know who is going to visit me. How I didn't know anything about it. So that was making me conscious about it. But there could be something all of a sudden someone says something to me and uh, I would feel anxious about it. Oh, this is a childhood pattern or an inner child healing coming up. So no matter what's happening, where your trigger point is, you can still try these ones. The first one is breathing. You're feeling anxious, the tightness. So just closing your eyes, breathing in. So try to breathe in with your mouth closed, just through your nose as well. So you are uh, connecting to your nervous system and it is just shrinking and slowing down. Like I think it is called para, um, parasympathetic. Uh, yeah, anyway, I won't try it. I just didn't remember the name there. I'll type it in later. So just start closing your mouth and breathing into your belly. Breathing out, you can open your eyes here. One more time, breathing into your belly. Breathing out, that itself. Did you notice the voice change in me? Just a one round of breathing, that does happen. That is so quick. So try to do at least five rounds of breathing before you make any action, before even you get out of your bed to have a shower. So you are starting your moment of that trigger point in a calm state. So breathing always. So there are many other breathing techniques as well, but I'm recently finding this one to be more quicker and uh, coming completely into my awareness of my body. So the other one is um, to have uh, a connection to your body. So the second one, so your body is telling you, so being aware of it, you know, what is that? Where is your aches? Where is your pains? Where is your anxious center, which is your most uh, easily communicated spot in your body? That is something that you need to hold it up, like, you know, because that can be quite often that you know it, like, yeah. 
The other one is um, vitamin M, which is meditation. I just love that. Like, you know, you can visualize yourself to be on a fluffy cloud. If I do this with the kids, it will be on a fluffy candy floss or into candy land. It could be or to the beach or playground or yourself into magical forest. Like, yeah, if you are into fairies, connecting the fairies or angels, it can be anything whichever you're comfortable with. Like, you know, I wouldn't say like go on to a train if you're not comfortable getting on the train. So do pick a meditation or a visualization that you are really comfortable about, you know. I would even have that, um, the timer one, the sand one, where you can just watch it. And that is itself a meditation. So it can be very simple. Or if it is raining, which happens more in Ireland, I do watch uh, the rain uh, splashing on the windows. And that is quite meditating for me. So do pick uh, which is resonating to you. And again, start with only five minutes of meditation, but hold to that every single day to do it. So you are um, pulling yourself, your muscles to be stronger on the vitamin M. So it is there for you when you need the resource uh, in that dip moment when you really need, oh, today I need something more. So you're already building up your uh, reservoir there, you have energy reservoir. So the other one is self-care. I love about this. Like, yeah, I know some of them, you know, agree. Like, how can I get self-care? I don't have time. But hey, when you don't have time for yourself, you have got no time for anyone or no one has got time for you. So the priority is about you, the self-care. Again, self-care may not be a weekend away on a big holiday or a cruise. It can be simple as getting into the nature. Um, going into the beach or into the park or in your own home your favorite spot just winding down yourself with a cup of coffee or a tea herbal tea is what i recommend generally for the anxious moments and uh, just connecting with yourself or getting your nails done like you know and uh, if you feel like you want to put your lipstick on just do it that little self-care need not cost you so much or get a book and read 30 minutes just be with a book that you like it so that is the other thing that you can do as well. Again, it's all the practices. See which one you relate to. It also helps you to distract from what that moment is bringing you on that you want to work on as well. When you're self-caring, you are getting the power back into yourself. You are your own priority. None of your thoughts or none of the situations are the priority. So you are owning to yourself. So the fourth one is clutter-free. When I say clutter-free, I mean both the head and also the space as well that you're in. Generally, if the space, the physical space is cluttered, so as it replicates into our emotions as well, somewhere down we are just uh, putting more and more stuff and not dealing with it. And so as physically as well we are. Think about it. Uh, is your bedroom, your living room? Living room is the one I would focus on if we feel anxious because it is, again, your solar plexus chakra in your living room. And do you want to cleanse it? Do you want to make it more spacious? Do you want to take away and put it in the recycle bin or give for a charity that makes you feel good about it as well? If you haven't used something uh, for a long time, just give it off to charity. You'll feel so good, I can say on that. yeah. And that helps you to clutter free physical location. And start with something small, not the whole room just by a cupboard because it is quite tiring as well. And uh, then come down to your mind. Ask yourself, what is your moment? So, and uh, what is your moment of how to clutter free your mind? For me, it's a journaling. I have loads of books. I just keep journal, journal, journal. It could be a crappy thought or sometimes I just use a voice recorder, download all the stuff that's in my head. So I'm just taking away the old stuff and bringing with the new wisdom that I'm connecting with the higher self, you know. So think about both when it comes to the clutter as well. It does help and the less anxious you'll get as well, like, you know, because you you get a clarity as what's in the room, like, you know, the same thing, what's happening in yourself, you get a clarity, where is that uh, thought coming from as well. So coming to the next point, uh, that is the, um, going into the nature, connecting to the nature. Yeah. Hi, Mandy. There you go. Uh, yeah. For self-care, self-expression, uh, dancing is really good. So true. Like, yeah, she is my crazy friend who loves to dance in the nature. Yeah. Coming out of the closet and just doing it as no one. She's trying to inspire me to do that. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, forest park and ground like that, Mandy would go into the forest. She'll be doing live from the forest. Uh, do check her page. It's one to one healing. So she would be doing this live Facebook live from the forest where she just connects to the nature, showing the sun, showing the beautiful trees or to the ocean as well. The, the waves, it just heals me the days I can't go. I just virtually see it and it connects to me. And that uh, is, again, a fraction of change in your environment will help you to get your healing uh, much easier, much deeper out as well. Like, you know, definitely a change in uh, uh, situation is so needed. Like, you know, even if you can't get out of your house, just into your balcony or into your back garden or to the front park or around the estate. Like, you know, it's just like zap out of the situation where you are in or uh, do ask for help someone that you trust. Uh, to help you to get out of the place where you are in. In my case, I would often ask my husband if he sees me, I'm under the duvet, not good sign, gets me out, like saying like there's a beautiful sunrise or sunset, like let's go out for a drive even because he knows I'm not great at walk. So that helps me to change when I'm back into the house, I'm totally in a different zone. So definitely try that out, yeah. So 30 minutes of gadget free. We are big addictives to the gadgets, right? Like here, I'm using the Facebook as well, social media. It is so much like uh, great things as well, but it does take the discipline out of us. So when you see something on the social media and uh, you might feel unknowingly you're creating an anxiousness. Someone has something, you want it, or someone is having a retreat, you want to have that for yourself, but you're not able to afford with the time or the money as well. So that again, um, gets caught up in your own lifestyle and you feel like oh what is this what's wrong with me why am i not able to enjoy my life so you are taking on something that is not yours even and uh, not seeing what's right for us so zapping out of your uh, social medias or even the whole gadget for 30 minutes even like you know every couple of hours give a break of 30 minutes i'm not going to go on to them and check and even if i'm there i'm going to have a selective timing and come out of it like so you're having a healthy relation with it Social media is always going to be on top of us, but it is about us again taking the control, how we are going to use it, how we are going to look into it, how we are going to respect ourselves more to be what's being shown to us as well. Yeah. So do watch out your relationship with your social media as well. Is it healthy? Is it not healthy? Where can you place your boundaries on it? You know? uh yeah summer so the seventh point is the summer waking up early last couple of uh, days i'm waking up like 15 minutes before my alarm is ringing and it's so good that i'm able to do my breathing and also gratitude like so relaxing way rather than rushing that i have to wake the children and get ready for their schools and everything but it is more in a calming environment, which is so important. So just by easily um, switching your alarm to 10 to 15 minutes is good enough rather than trying like, oh, I better do it like six o'clock or five o'clock. No, that's not going to happen. Be very practical about your timings, how um, 10 minutes can make a difference to yourself, giving that time undivided attention to yourself first thing in the morning. Don't use the gadgets again. Don't bring all these people from your social media into your bedroom when you wake up so you are just by yourself it might be a little discomfort in the start but you'll start enjoying the company of yourself waking up by yourself having a gratitude and breathing in connection with your body and then functioning you will actually appreciate how beautiful the day is going on as well even if you slept well or not it has a good impact on the day so when you do that and the night is very good for you to sleep and unwind as well, you're more in contentful when you sleep as well. Yeah, so do watch that out. Lavender is the other thing that I love about when I feel anxious as well. I do like um, recently my older child, she was uh, she was having a little sleep difficulties a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so I said, I'll try lavender for her. And she absolutely loves the children love the lavender. Oil. Again, check with uh, if they have any allergies or yourself as well. Or um, are you okay with it? You know, so and then use it safely. Just a drop on the pillow will help you to relax as well or uh, eye bags so here is an eye bag so on eye bag it's great as well to hold, have it over your eyes or a tissue just have it or scarves as well so you're breathing in this beautiful fragrance and which is like organic or something nature that you do check out when you buy 
and you are uh, just this calming effect from the aromatherapy is so good you are more easier in your body do try out it is uh, i have been using it uh, lavender oil for nine years i love it every day either on the pillow or on the eye bags like you know even just rubbing on my wrist as well it's just beautiful it kids love it as well it's not too strong as well yeah or in your infusers or uh, uh the oil burners you can use it yeah next one coffee free time i hate to say this but yeah i'm a coffee lover but when i'm feeling anxious that's the absolute time that i should be avoiding personally i know that and my body do say the sign of it and try picking up the herbal teas the herbal teas that i prefer to have when i feel anxious is rose um, or uh, rose uh, the flower buds uh, uh, you can get the fresh ones, so which is good as well, rather than the packet ones. Or good brands, try organic brands. Uh, rose is good, chamomile is good. Uh, have tried uh, and peppermint as well, quite refreshing. So do check which one is your favorite as well, and try to have the plant based or the food based as well. Uh, so it helps you to be again. You're drinking the warm water as a kind of a tea, and this is like your system is getting uh, calm without you even noticing it yeah just enjoy that smell as well and uh, having your herbal teas you're totally in centered is a good place yeah that you are beginning your time with again it is only that 10 minutes break you're giving from your thoughts from your emotion to yourself and you're doing good for your whole physical body as well doing that yeah on that note um other one is uh, very good is uh, doing yoga Pilates or Tai Chi, gentle hand movements, and these will help your energy to flow within your body. So, as I said, like you know, when we are anxious, your body goes in the tightness, uh, and in that tightness, all your muscles ache, and you feel so discomfortable. And you know what? And um, relaxing techniques like slow dancing, conscious dancing, as well helps, is you're letting the flow of energy. So. Think metaphorically as well. If something hits you, you are very mobile. You are very flexible to go along the places rather than being stuck or stagnant as well. So, which is good tip to try. You know, uh, again, watching from the YouTube as well. You can do. You don't need to go for a classes. Very simple ones. And if you have time and you can do it, go for a class as well. You get to meet your tribe there. So, which is even better. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Holding a friend as your accountability is very good, the 11th point. Uh, when I have tough times, I do share with just a couple of my close friends whom I do trust them, that they are going to hold it with them and they are going to support me with full compassion and not going to judge me to what I have shared. That is so important. If you do that to someone, I'm sure you will be having that space with someone else as well who they can hold it for you. It is a good, healthy relationship. If you don't have one, don't worry. I say, ask the universe, they'll provide you, you know. And uh, when that emotion kicks in, think about who is the right person that you can share with. And do share with it, don't hold it for yourself. And it helps in like just letting it out. It could be a rant. It could be emotion you're sharing and just let it flow. You feel so good afterwards and someone could give a very good wisdom or a different point of thinking that you wouldn't have thought about it even. And why not? And um, having a good time with a good friend is never a um, minus point, isn't it? It is great. You're recharging your soul in a good company as well. And this is where it is very important to hold our space with a tribe as well. You know whom to reach out quickly. Uh, relaxing the body, yeah. Accept, South point, accept your anxious. Most of the time I was in denial that I was anxious or I need to work on it or perfectly fine, I'm coping, I'm okay, is the things that I would say to myself. But like one day I realized, no crap, I'm not. I'm not even able to get out of the bed. I'm not even able to get to the shower. I'm just not able to even think what I should be doing. I'm not able to get the energy or the focus. So it's the time I agree to myself, I need help. And that is the biggest thing, the awakening that will happen when you say to yourself, you need help and the help comes on the way. 
by all the things that you're listening, like, you know, these things, you might know it already or it's new thing for you. So this is where the help is coming for, like, you know, and again, connecting to your same like-minded people who have been in the journey or someone comes down and says like, hey, this is the book I read. Why don't you read this? You know, so you are in connection with that point. So always. Don't deny it. If you need help, you need help. That's it. Yeah. It could be to the going to the doctor. It could be or to the um, psychologist. It could be a counselor. It could be. It could be a friend. It could be your partner. You just need to say you need help, and you getting the help. Like yeah, and don't leave it for too long. It is good to work on earlier days because there is already so much that we'll be working on ourselves backwards to wherever we start the journey. So it's never too late. Yeah. Um, observing the thoughts without judging them. So this is the best thing that I learned in mindfulness is about the thoughts do come and go. All you need to do is observe them and uh, not being judgmental, not even to yourself. The first thing is we judge ourselves so much. If you say like, oh, I deserve this, I should be going through this, like, yeah, well done, like, you know, and you give out, give out, and you blame yourself so much that you're already inside deep hole. It is hard to get out. But as these anxious thoughts come in, they're not nice thoughts, they're not nice feelings. You just acknowledge them, they're happening to you, and let them pass. This is what the Thich Nhat Hanh, he says, that uh, their thoughts are only a passing by clouds, uh, let them come, let them pass by, so you're not holding them, you're not anchoring these thoughts, but you're anchoring to your own uh, breathing into your body. So that is the important bit, like, yeah. And so don't judge yourself. Of course, you wouldn't judge your children or your family members whom you dearly love, like, right? So why do you judge yourself? Think about it, yeah. And 14, self-talk. Self-talk is so important. We are very good at doing it, but the negative self-talk, we are very good at it. I have to say, and we have to train ourselves to be a positive self-talk. So you're noticing the thoughts coming in and then ask, where is this thought coming from? And why am I getting it? Is it mine or is it someone else planting it? Sometimes you do pick up someone's anxiousness that it couldn't be even yours, you know? And uh, so ask yourself, where is it? Is it yours? No dump it in the bin like think i have in my head i created this little recycles thing where i dump that's not that's not mine goes into the recycle that's stuff and so you can do that with yourself as well so it helps you to actually declutter again back into that point but also you're accepting you're giving the time for yourself to analyze where is it coming from and yours you can work on it if it's not yours i can guarantee 80 percent are not yours and uh, most of them are someone is created it to you as you were being raised into that culture, the society, parents, schooling as well, and all are coming back. Or something from the future that even hasn't happened, like, you know, as I was saying about the RDS last week. So it is that haven't happened, and I'm already thinking about so many ifs and buts, and what's the point? Like, none of it happened. It was all smooth sailing. Such a beautiful, successful event. I was so happy being there. But all that created that one week of anxiousness. Like, you know, what was the whole point about it? Yeah. So you get to be going through, you, you take yourself to the procedure there, and you are very strong, and you hold the power center to yourself saying, like, let's do this together, and you're working it along, yeah. And you need to be very proud of doing that, like, with this self-talk, the positive self-talk, and then replace it. Acknowledge that. Replace with good, loving thoughts. Yes, I can do this. I have the support. I can do it. And I have all the information. I have all the connections. I can do anything that I want. Like, from your heart, you have a desire, you can do it. The self-talk is so important. And uh, remember, everyone goes through that. Maybe not everyone talks about it. So you might think like, oh, well, other people don't uh, have that same uh, anxious feeling when they do some big things. But like maybe they haven't spoken to you about it. Yeah. So we all do have our own little bits. We need to be prepared with it. Self-talk is the best one. So love yourself. Self-care, self-love, self-positive talk are so important. Start a journey with yourself. So the last one, the 15th point. So this is all about being present moment. Just because you're in the present moment, you guys are tuning in and listening to here. And uh, that is so important. When you're in the present moment, everything else doesn't matter. 
you have no control on the past or the future you absolutely understand that point it is that thought right now what i'm speaking is i'm in control of i don't even know what after 10 minutes i'm in control of so why bother about it as said all these 15 points are so important so valid yet we do struggle from time to time i do and i need a reminder of them so i thought i'll share it out with you guys and see what you connect and resonate with and if you do something else out of these 15 things please do share in the comments so i get to know i get to learn from you guys what has worked for you as well.